Well, hello. <laughs> 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 okay. Sit down. Hello. My furry little friends. Today I have Ellie and Asia. Golden Doodle. Irish Doodle. Who have a lot of hair. Sit down. Along with my dog training series. Today we're going to talk about health and grooming on this beautiful day. It's warm, it's 93 degrees. We're gonna talk about grooming your dogs, health of your dogs, and then we're gonna play some fun doggy games. Some fun dog training games that you can do with your dogs in any park such as this. First of all, you always want to brush your dogs a couple times a week. You can get dog brushes, <clears throat> but I do love a human brush. They're gentle, they're kind. You can get down to the skin. You always want to make sure that you're brushing, you're getting down to the skin. With Ellie here, her hair is so curly, it's very hard to get a comb on her. So I will comb some of her ears. Um, they get groomed in a couple weeks and they'll get down to about a half an inch, which is good for summer. But any dog that you have, you want to brush them at least a couple times a week. It's good for their skin. It's good bonding time. I always kind of go with the flow and just groom them as we relax. You can use this brush. See all the hair that comes off? Get all that old hair off. This is called a slicker brush. This is for hair that's, oh, I like these dogs, very curly, wavy. Good for dogs who have a coat that you can fluff up, that you can back comb. Just like this. Get through all those layers. Make them nice and fluffy and pretty. Be very gentle with their skin. You take your dog to a groomer, have them pull the hair out of the ears. It doesn't hurt. You just want to free up some of that hair in there a little bit to get some air, especially with dogs that have ears that fold over. You want to make sure that some air gets in there and they don't get too moist up in there. I know everyone hates that word, but it's true. We also want to talk about feeding your dog you want to feed a very good dog food, it's good to do research on the type of breed you have. I know Royal Cannon, Science Diet, they have specialty breed foods. I feed my dogs Prina One. Um, if they don't have Prina One, I go to Pro Plan. Prina One is the higher brand at the grocery store. And when we leave, lived way out in the boonies in Brighton, Colorado, it was hard to find a place to run and go get dog food. So I stayed on Prina One. I don't go anything below Prina One. Down. The first ingredient that you want to have on your dog food is meat. 
first ingredient would be chicken. Not chicken byproduct, not chicken fillers, not corn, not barley, rice, or any kind of grain. You want the first ingredient to be meat. Anything over Prina 1 and Pro Plan can be pretty good dog foods. I have looked at other dog foods that are cheaper, let's say. That's what I mean by below Prina 1. I looked on the ingredients and I really didn't like the ingredients. If your dog has special uh, needs for a diet, then you can ask your veterinarian what he or she suggests. Also, if your dog has trouble with stomach or skin, they have special breed skin and stomach dog foods. Prina One has one, ProPlan has one, Science Diet has one. On teeth care, you would like to brush your dog's teeth at least once a week, if not two or three times a week. You can use a washcloth, special for your dog, just keep it for your dog, and a little bit of dog toothpaste, or also with a little oil on it, like olive oil. Uh, I like grapeseed oil, coconut oil is very good, and you just rub their teeth, and it rubs the bacteria off, and will keep some of the tartar from forming. Every three years, it's a good idea to look at the back of their teeth and see if they need to have their teeth cleaned by your veterinarian. Nail clipping. You can always look at your dog's nails. If they come to a sharp point, then just take the points off with your nail clipper. You can also take them into a groomer and have them clip them and they usually will charge $10 to have it done. If your dog has black nails, you can shine a flashlight underneath so you can find the quick and then clip in front of the quick. If you happen to come too close to the quick and it bleeds, you can put cornstarch and pack it with cornstarch to stop the bleeding. They look like they're gonna bleed a lot and it kind of looks like your bloody nose. Looks like a lot of blood, but it really isn't and it will stop. But it's good to put something on it to help the bleeding to stop. For feeding any treats, I like treats that are all natural. A lot of the store brand treats will give your dog gas. If your dog has a lot of gas, then it has probably something to do with their food. And you might need to change their food or their treats. Good lay, good girl. These dogs run and play in the grass with, that has a lot of seeds and these little seed pods and they get them in their hair. So if you hear all of that going on, that's, what's, that's what I'm getting out of their fur. Very interesting in the, the trash man, huh? Yes. If you have any other questions about dog care or dog training, please 
put them down in the comments below and I will answer your questions. You can also message me on Instagram. If you're based in Colorado, I would love to come help you train your dogs. We can go for a walk together and I can teach you a uh, special to your needs and your dog on dog care and dog training. I was six years old I trained my first dog it was my neighbor's dog it was a little blue healer puppy and I just went over there we kind of knew him as our neighbors and I said I saw that you got a new puppy and they said yes and I said could I take your puppy for walks and they said why sure and I said well my mom's a dog trainer and she's taught me how to walk dogs and they were like yeah it's no problem i do have a picture of this little dog i will try and find it yep, it's at my mom's house my mom was a dog trainer and did some dog obedience trials <clears throat> with her husky that she had back in the 1960s. Come, come. We gotta do this side. Ooh. Okay. So everywhere I went, if there were dogs nearby, next door, I would ask if I could walk them. I remember helping my neighbors and friends with their dogs. I've always helped with people and their animals. I just really love helping people understand their animals more. Lay, stay. <laughs> stay. Always hurry a little bit because dogs can only handle so much before they get tired of it. And these dogs have a lot of a lot of hair. When I was at the horse stable, there they had a lot of dogs. And when I would spend the night there, there would be many dogs roaming the grounds. There was Danny and Bullet and Candy, Ingemar, all kinds of doggy names. Stay, stay. You have to stay. When I got older, and I got married. I had grown up with dogs my whole life. My mom had a Schnauzer and she had poodles. She had a shepherd dog for a little while. And so when I got married, I wanted a Schnauzer and I went to the animal shelter, but she was gone. I came home and I was pretty heartbroken because I really wanted this little schnauzer. Well, I was hanging out with a neighbor and I had told her the story and she said, well, I know a puppy that really needs a good home. My family's, I believe it was sister-in-law had this litter of puppies that 
they had brought home a little female chihuahua from the animal shelter and she was pregnant with puppies of, from a red healer. So I said, yeah, please bring him over and I'll look at him. And she brought him over and it was this little, little dog and he ran under the coffee table and he was shivering and he was scared. And I was like, oh my goodness, like what happened to this poor puppy? He was three months old. And she said, they didn't do anything with him. He wasn't potty trained. He didn't know anything and his name was Baseball. And I said, well, that, that's not gonna work. I'm not naming my dog Baseball. Nothing to do with Baseball. I just didn't want a dog named Baseball. Well, I went around the coffee table and I sat down and I said, come here, come here, little dog, little puppy, come here. And I finally coaxed him out from underneath the coffee table and he crawled into my lap and he fell asleep and he stuck his little tongue out. And that was that. That's when I got Pan. Pan was sweetest, funniest little dog. And he was feral when I got him. I put him on a leash and I did not take him off a leash. For a long time, we did lots of obedience. And I had to take him out and teach him to go outside to go potty. I had to take him out every 15 minutes and then it was every half an hour and then it was back to every 20 minutes and then it was 45 minutes and then it was an hour and I just kept on and on and on taking him outside bringing him in taking him outside bringing him in until he could figure out that he could not go in the house. After I got him body broken he never went in the house until he got sick, 12 years later. Not once. He was such a good dog. So I had Pan. I named him after the, the god of nature, personal abandonment. We were in Colorado Springs for a year and then we moved to Germany and I took him with me and my two ferrets. Chaos and Cyric. Stay. Stop. Good girl. And in Germany, when I first got there, we had to move a couple times to different apartments. And I began working at the commissary. So I had to leave Pan at home for about five, six hours. And then I got pregnant with my first child and I decided to open up my own business, Callie's Furry Friends. And I began to groom and pet sit and dog train for the whole army base in Kaiserslautern, Germany. And we lived at Volgaway. I will put up some pictures of all this neat stuff where we lived. And I did that up until we left in 2000. And we got there in 1994. We were almost there for six years. We were there five and three quarters. I took Pan to three obedience trials. I won the first one. I got second place in the second one. 
and first place in the third one because they wouldn't allow you to win first place. every year, which was fine. I was okay with that. I held dog training classes. I would put out cones and we would do cone work and doggy games. I had dog training classes every week. And in the winter months, I would do it on good days or I would go to people's apartments and help them train their dogs. Because naturally I help people with their dogs. I show them how to train their dog and then basically I'm training people. Although pretty soon I'm going to do foster care and take in young dogs and train them until they are adopted to their forever homes. So that's gonna be fun. I'm pretty excited about that. I would have a lot of dogs in my apartment at Christmas time and the holidays, other holidays, and I had neighbors that would come down and I would take three or four dogs out at a time to go walk. And one of my neighbors was like, how many dogs do you have? And I said, well, I only have one dog, but I'm pet sitting for people so they can go home and see their families at Christmas or, or Thanksgiving or a birthday, or they just want to go home to the States. And I would have their dogs for a week or two weeks. And she was like, oh my, like, I never hear that you have so many dogs in your apartment and it's because the minute they came in, I would train them not to bark. And Pan was a very good babysitter. He would make sure they behaved. He was a good grandpa, basically. Or when he was younger, it was a good uncle. And while I was in Germany, when I first got there, I got my certificate in animal science, veterinary assistant tech. So I did all the book work and got my certificate. And then I got us my certificate in animal or dog obedience training. And I have a certificate in that. And back then it wasn't online. We were had internet but not everything was online like it is now and I did it through the mail so I would get my books I would study take my tests send it back and got all A's on everything maybe a B I always make sure I love research and taking notes I didn't like going to school, but I loved the schoolwork. Well, in 2000, we had to go home. You could only stay to, in Germany to a married... Well, in 2000, we had to go home. We could only stay in Germany for six years, but we were able to extend for an extra six months and then we had to go home. And I was pregnant with my daughter and decided that would be good to have her in the States. So that's what we did, we went home and my husband got out of the army and decided to go into computers. But we also had to find a place to live. He had to get a job. And I had my son and my daughter. We lived with my 
mom and my grandma briefly for a couple months. And then, just before Halloween of 2000, we moved into our first house. And Todd went into the reserves. And I still had Pan. And I kept my Callie's Furry Friends business open and began to just groom neighborhood dogs. And I've always trained dogs. I would just put up flyers and there was a little book at the time that would go around and it was kind of like a little telephone book and you could put your little ad in there. And I put an ad in there. I did have some people come and they wanted me to pay for a license to groom dogs in my own house. But at the time, I wasn't making that much money. I was only doing a couple a month. It would hurt my allergies. And grooming dogs is a lot of work. It's a lot of cleanup. You have to sharpen your bread blades. My batteries and my clippers went dead and I had to buy new batteries and they're like a hundred dollars a piece. So I didn't, I didn't want to continue to do that. I would rather just help people pet sit and train their dogs. I did work briefly at a kennel that was down the street when I was going to the horse stable when I was a teenager. I volunteered briefly at a veterinary and I could have become a vet tech, but I really didn't want to work in a veterinary. I loved having my own business, being my own boss, and that's what I wanted to do. I didn't want to be cooped up inside all day. I love being outside. I wanted to have my own place. Really never have been able to have my own place of business, but I am glad I've always been able to have my own business and been able to work out of my house, especially nowadays. My family all works from home, which is nice. No. I will continue to brush these dogs all out nicely. And then we're gonna play some doggy games. Please stay tuned for that because they're a lot of fun. Today I'm using Pivo, the tracking device on my phone I got for my birthday. I thought I would use it today to show everyone what some doggy dog training games that you can do with your dogs. Today I have Asia and Ellie. Come. I have them on long leashes and when you're walking your dogs what you want to do is I love long leashes and today I just have them on a few leashes but you can also buy the long lines and you can use long lines 
to walk your dogs and teach them how to recall, how to come to you from further away. But when you have them on a long leash, then they can go further away and then you can call them to you. drop them and so I have two dogs and what we're gonna do is go back and forth we're gonna go back and forth and just walk back and forth and we're not really gonna worry about what the leashes are doing or if they're getting tangled up we're gonna let them figure it out and we're gonna go the opposite way of the dog We're just going to go back and forth. And once they start following you, then we're just going to go the other way. And this is also a really good exercise. basically call it follow the leader. Also, we're going left to right, right to left. Now we want to go the opposite direction. So we're going to go this way. And we're going to go back. And what this does is we want them to follow you. And also, it's a fun way to play with your dog. Now we're going to put both games together. We're going to go And forth. And then we're going to go this way. And then we're going to turn around and go this way. And if your dog starts going off, just pull. Pull them with you. Now that you know your follow the leader game, now we're gonna bring up our leashes. <laughs> it's cooled off a little bit out here. <clears throat> and we're gonna do walking games. Come. What you like to do is have your dog and teach them a command to come around. You can either teach them to come to you and come around and turn around and come to a heel at your side, or you can have them come around your body, come to whatever side you want them on, come around and then heel. So we're gonna do to and fro. To and fro is when you're walking and you're walking down the sidewalk or wherever you're walking and you don't wanna just walk in a straight line and train your dog to walk at a heel. You want 
to do things on your walk. So you want to go back and forth, to and fro. Come. And since I have two dogs, we're going to go just turn around and go the other way. And then you're going to turn around and go the other way. Now that there's a tree, we're going to go around the tree. And we're going to go around this tree. So whatever obstacles that come across your way, Go around trees, go around a mailbox, a car, up and down the driveway, go back and forth. And then you can also slow down your walk and go slow. faster now also on your walk you can do zigzag Another thing you can do is figure eight. So I'm gonna use a tree as one of my circles, and we're gonna do use a tree in the middle, and we're gonna do a figure eight around the tree. So we're gonna start here, and we're gonna do this. We're gonna do a circle, come back to the tree, do a circle, Now I'm going to turn around and go the other way because I want my camera to follow me. But you get you get the gist that you want to do a figure eight. And then And what you're doing is you want to do shapes. You want to do circles and squares and triangles. So we can do a triangle. That down. We can also do cone work, which is just Going back and forth. And back and forth.
just like that. Sit. Every time you stop, have your dog stand and wait or sit and wait. I'm not always big on sitting all the time. I think teaching your dog to stand and wait is really good too, especially when dogs get older and their hips or their bodies don't need to have to sit all the time. But make sure that you teach your dog to stand and wait. So if you, st you stop and you're talking to someone, have your dogs stand and wait and stay. If you tell your dog to stay, then make sure you have a free command when you can go and be free again. Also, you can say stay, and then you can say come around and heal, and then continue on. But make sure your dog stays, and they stay until you tell them otherwise. What we're doing is we're just making sure that our dogs are safe and they know these commands in case something happens and you can, I have had to yell across the way, Pan, come, come here now. And I've had him come all the way across. Uh, I think he got off a leash one day and that happened and he came back to me. You never know, they could run across the street. You could tell him, I've taught my dogs to stop and down. So I'm glad there's no one here because I'm yelling. We're gonna continue on our walk today. It's beautiful out here, it's peaceful and it's quiet. So we're gonna walk all the way around the trees. I'll do one last view of these trees of us. If you have any questions or comments, please comment below any questions you have about dog training or dog health or any other questions that you have or what other videos you would like me to do. I do dog training. I do uh, our fun stuff that we do with the horses at the barn. I'm doing Pioneer Colorado in America. I'm going to cemeteries and talking about famous people and also I'm going to start doing some of the videos on true crime which to me is very fascinating and, and interesting and I love research so I'm going to start doing that as well. Please comment below what you would like to see or if you like what you see. 